think I'm gonna do the deep voice diggity this time. I said I was gonna do it on stream. I'm gonna roll with it. We're gonna see how it goes. We got Fisheye starting at the 12 o'clock location as the blue Protoss. 6 o'clock location, we have Cookie, aka Jess, starting as the pink Protoss. My nose is a little, part of the reason I'm doing this is my nose is a little bit messed up from having a cold that I inherited from my daughter. This is BSL a Group B final match. Whoever wins this advances to the round of eight. Whoever loses is eliminated. This is Blindside. I'm finally going to be able to show you guys this match. Ramp right here, which provides a little bit of that misfire rate if you're sitting right at the top of that map, or right at the top here on that edge. Otherwise, pretty wide natural expansion, kind of tower cross-ish. Nine o'clock base. I've said this so many times, but it hasn't ended up in a commentary. It feels silly. A little bit defeated. This base, you can see there's multiple entry points uh, to be quote-unquote blindsided with, hence the name of the map. Mineral only in the middle, kind of in this weird, like, overarching position. And otherwise, not a, a lot of minerals for a two-player map. So it feels like it's kind of more macro-oriented, but at the same time, there's just a lot of... There's just a lot of areas to kind of run across the middle of the map uh, to go all the way and around. So the middle, you can just see, is just wide open, wide open space for engagements. Probe Scout moving down. Actually, with just a pylon right there, so Fisheye wants to get eyes on what Jess is up to before deciding any sort of tech. It looks like Jess is opting for an overpool, overlord first pool opener. And Fisheye should, well, let's see if we're going to see gateway first. Should react with something because you got to respect the spawning pool that's down there. But we're going to see whether it's gateway or forge, opting for forge first at that natural expansion. Probe getting a little bit of damage, but sees everything and critically sees that there's no additional gas being grabbed. So it's not going to be Zergling speed. Instead, two drones being pulled off the line to deal with that probe that it's going to try to disrupt that natural expansion. Uh, so spawning pool, probably going to see just a couple Zerglings. This is just to try to... For this, I, I also should comment on Jess. Jess usually plays Protoss, but uh, usually Rhett's famous for this. Selects an off race for the mirror matchup. And interestingly enough, going to go for a three hatch opener, taking this third base rather than dealing with the probe and its harassment at that natural expansion and allow the Zerglings to come alongside four Zerglings being produced and a drone. And once that's in position, it's uh, just should be in position to go ahead and take that th third without a lot of trouble. Probe wandering in, still seeing no Vespin Geyser, which is a big indicator to Fisheye that there's another base somewhere out there. Overlord wandering up, one photon cannon warping in. And the Nexus, and I think that Photon Cannon was before the Nexus, overall looking at the timing of it all. Probe still wandering out there, and four Zerglings actually making their way across. So, yeah, making their way across. Gateway and Probe in the way. I don't think they're going to be able to get anything accomplished right there. And Hatchery being plopped down with the Assimilator Follow Suggest going with a very aggressive economic opener. And as far as the timing of this, if there was a push into 973, feel like Jess would be in a better position to execute it comparative to Zamu in game one of their matchup. Single circling wandering up is going to find that photon cannon. It, trying to edge around to get some sort of scout does see that Nexus warping in. Assimilator warping in as well. The one thing with this hatchery at the far position, it's going to take a longer period of time for the drone transfer to get up there. So that's going to slow... Jess's economy down a little bit, but you can see a lot of drones being produced. <clears throat> and not a lot of additional Zerglings. 7x core warping in. Now the question for Fisheye, it looks like Fisheye going to go ahead and opt to build the obligatory zealots on the front door. Not going for weapons or anything crazy. I think we're going to still see the Stargate and Corsair play initially, especially realizing that this is 3 hatch play. I think it has good, good uh, instincts that this is in fact 3 hatch play. And I'm almost wondering if this probe is going to be able to make its way across to that. What is this? So that's technically nine. So this is eight. Eight o'clock location. Yeah, finding that eight o'clock base up and getting a good look at the probe or the drone count in that space. Initial zealot making its way across. As long as Jess stays on top of it, should be able to take that zealot out before. This is the thing is, is it depends on where the zealot goes and where the zerglings are. Still haven't been able to deal with that drone scout and that, or sorry, that probe scout and that probe seeing that the natural expansion not quite usually you want to get a good look and see whether more zerglings are being produced off the three bases whether the layer is being produced and we're seeing no layer which suggests we are going to see a transition into some form of this is going to be three hatch zergling almost looks like it's just going to be three hatch zergling because i do not see a hydralis stand down 
anywhere. There's the Hydrosten. Take it back. Might be a little bit confusing. Zerglings streaming their way across. There is a Zealot blockading. So that Zealot actually might be able to get a couple drone kills with these Zerglings out of position. And Jess, I think that cannon does in fact cover that gateway. Second Photon Cannon being dropped. Yeah. And trying to push through, just expending some Zerglings, and that's going to allow that Zealot to go ahead and get a drone, or at least puts, apply some pressure. Plus that Hydrosten's been spotted. Corsair being built, Weapons 1 being upgraded. Uh, for both air and ground. So Fisheye following this up with something very similar to his game, his matches versus Zamu. Zealot not able to get any drone kills, but able to disrupt mining at the very least at the third base. And Jess actually, we'll see how many Hydalisks get produced, but I feel a little bit light on the Hydalisks to deal with this initial Corsair, so might end, at the very least, probably going to end up losing this first Overlord. Which I don't think will result in a supply cap, assuming that Jess follows this up with a couple overlords being built, which should. But going ahead and getting a fourth hatchery at that third expansion is going to try to play, I think, more of a shelled game and force Fisheye to come that direction rather than the other way around. Three additional gateways being plopped down, Citadel of a Dune up, second Corsair being built, but no additional over no additional Corsair is being produced. Two overlords actually uh, being produced on the follow-up, and that is supply capping, Jess. I got mine at Tracy's, Tracy's Armory. Some Zerglings kind of pocketing here, and I think they want to go ahead and check that third base. There is a single Hydralisk to be annoying here, and th another Hatchery, so that's three Hatcheries at that location. This is going to be five hatchery. you usually see the five Hatcheries spread about, but that's going to be three Hatcheries making that kind of a juicier target out in space. The Overlord going to try to flee and make its way across, because this is two Corsairs. Another Overlord certainly going to be taken out. So just not quite having the over, the Hydralisk coverage to deal with the Corsairs that are out from Fisheye. And that's going to be troublesome. Actually, level 1 weapons was cancelled. So air weapons was cancelled. And it looks like the Corsair build was kind of pulled back from Fisheye. Another Overlord going to get killed. So it's going to be three Overlord deaths from two Corsairs and a long supply cap from Jess. Yeah, Jess not really dealing with that well at all. That's going to slow Jess's economy down significantly. Lair now being upgraded. Does have a lot of Zerglings in position to deal with, or at least spot, the Zealots as they're making their way across. Light, leg speed and level 1 weapons are going to be there momentarily. And this is kind of the typical timing we've seen from Protoss players these days. Templar Archives following this up. But I'm almost wondering, with those additional Overlord kills, looks like one Corsair finally being taken out. With those additional Overlord kills, if Fisheye is even going to opt for the timing, or if he's just going to kind of push out, clear a couple of these Zerglings, and go ahead and take an additional base. Knowing that... He's got kind of the economic lead and really doesn't need to need to dive anything or commit too much. As far as a follow-up. Hydralis range being a bunch of Hydralis being produced at that 9 o'clock. Corsair wandering the way across. The Zealots going to be able to wander in. This is a decent Sim City. Two creep colonies being forced at this third base. And the Hydralisks, again, have a lot of uh, space to kind of cover to try to defend against this marching Zealot army. It looks like they are going to find them diving into the natural expansion. Honestly, this feels like just kind of donated units from Fisheye, but they are going to be able to peel out a lot of Hydalisks before just getting kind of a concentrated response. I wonder how much lag is happening here, too, because this honestly looks kind of a little bit like a, a lag fight over overall as well. Zealots continuing to peel down into that natural expansion. There is a something colony right there. Just might have actually been donating units just to get uh, that up, but another Overlord being killed overhead. Jess's economy has really been battered by these Overlord kills. And the Zelt's going to go ahead and back off as a follow-up, but this is going to be a big follow-up attack with some Psystorm. Fisheye wants to get it done on the ground. That's six gateways. Six, technically seven, with that on front. So I assume as soon as we see an Observer, we're going to see Fisheye peeling out with a sizable army. Has done a lot of economic damage and just Overlord kills alone. And has forced a lot of army to be built. Fisheye, if nothing else, has done a pretty good job of kind of doing that. Kill the opponent's army, keep their economy small uh, style of play. Supply cap right the second at 90, but still overall ahead compared to Jess. Jess uh, peeking, seeing the Zealots wanting to wander up and go ahead and take an additional base. Kind of hiding. Ooh, might get on top of those High Templar. Killing a High Templar would be that's a great honor. Zerglings flooding, kind of pocketing those Zerglings so they can go ahead and take that probe out and delay that base a little bit. Not enough to 
stop that from being taken, but perhaps enough to at least be annoying. Some zealots eating a little bit of their own psi storm. And the Zergling is just going to try to be annoying and pick off any probe that wanders its way out with that speed. And Zell's trying to chase them down and, and pull that back. It just does have another drone at that 9 o'clock to try to grab an additional base. And faltering a little bit on macro back at home. Is getting a Spire up at this stage. Does have uh, Overlord Speed coming online. But Fisheye, like, wandering up. Okay, now, now position to go ahead and dig a base. This is kind of an interesting play. Getting a lot of these gateways down, so now up to eight gateways overall. So opting for eight gateways before taking the third, not committing an attack, and and playing from there. Range also being upgraded to deal with potential lurker uh, follow up. The Zelts are going to be able to wander around, deal with that nine o'clock base. They have to be a little bit wary of those Zerglings that are going to be able to run across those two cannons. Are they going to warp in in time? One cannon is going to be up, but this is enough Zerglings where they should be able to take at least one of those cannons down. Might even be able to stop that Nexus. Grouping up. Are they going to get... They are going to get a Nexus. And I think they got it before there was the cancellation there. Units streaming in to this 3 o'clock base. Right on top of the Sunk Colonies. Before the Hydra's really able to engage. Some nice Psy Storm on the Hydra. Some Zealots eating a bit of that Psy Storm as well. But yeah, just folding in here. And just... I think that's going to be GG. Honestly, with this attack peeling in. So yeah, able to get that Nexus down and halt it. But that's going to be at the cost of several hatcheries. More Hydra's being produced. But still not enough... Uh, to deal with this army and their Psy Storm waiting for them right as they spawn. Yeah, Jess economy just getting obliterated. And Fisheye once again staying on top of the macro, this time having a little bit more of army cohesion. And I didn't think about the uh, the lag aspect perhaps in the last game, kind of playing into that as well. Beautiful Psy Storms fighting this army back. This is great unit positioning for Fisheye, honestly. Does he have another Psy Storm? Looks like that has another Psy Storm perhaps. Finally, a Mulus being produced, which can deal with the rest of this army, but not before two hatcheries are down. Another good size storm catching, actually catching a bit of a mutalisk as well. <laughs> An Archon being morphed in and out of what's left, but all sorts of economic damage on Jess's base and stopping any additional base uh, from being built. And forcing more units uh, to be produced just in case there's any sort of follow-up. So Jess's economy just absolutely wrecked another hatchery as part of a Sim City. There were all some zealots marching the way. Well, a couple units out of position right there. Nexus is finally warping in. That's going to be third base right there. Jess trying to, hoping to wander up. Let's see if this, is this going to be a single storm on this drone? I think this this High Templar just wants to wander in and drop a Psy Storm right there on that drone line. Some units streaming across for Jess. There's plenty of cannons. Here's the thing. It's just such an exposed third base for both players. But yeah, ground units really end up being effective on this map. Mutalists wandering forward. There are no longer Corsairs, and there's only a single cannon to try to provide some defense at the main. Once that cannon's down, it's going to be up to a Dragoon defense force to try to protect this. So Jess with kind of a pseudo-tech switch, and Fisheye not building the Corsairs to deal with this. He saw the, saw the Mutalists, but perhaps didn't th think, he, maybe thought he had enough. But a beautiful side storm catching zero probes and all sorts of Mutalists is going to force that back. Almost a little bit lucky. I'm looking for the High Templar that managed to wander in there. I think it was killed before it was able to do any damage. But third base is up for Fisheye. Fisheye once again staying on top of the macro comparatively to the oppo uh, to their opponent. So 120 supply, basically twice the supply once again. Some Mulus trying to drive these Zealots out of what could potentially be a fourth base. But a mineral only is easy to take right here for Fisheye as well. And the Zealots going to be able to wander in. Being driven out by those Mulus is going to be able to spot Jess's fourth base. Which is not exactly, I think, what Jess hoped for. Getting, finally, additional hatcheries reestablished. So that's four at four, five, six. Is that the right count? One, two, three, four. Yeah, six. And technically seven, but I don't think the seventh hatchery is going to see the light of day. Not if these elves have anything. Yeah, so there's the cancellation. So Jess having some trouble getting some map control. It looks like... Fisheye again staying on top of the macro. The Zealots peeling down. There's no Sunken Colony this time. Try to defend. They're going to get right on top of those Hydalisks. There are Mutalisks overhead. But honestly, in small numbers, ooh, and a good size storm. The Mutalists not microing their way out of it. So getting wiped out very, very rapidly. There are lurk. There is a single lurker there to defend, but there's observers and dragoons and size storm to greet them. So once again, Fisheye able to get into this third base location and probably going to be able to take out a couple hatcheries. And there's GG from just realizing that that would be the nail in the coffin. So game one going to Fisheye through just honestly superior positioning and macro. 
We will move on to game two. Fisheye one game away from advancing and just one game away from elimination. We'll see if... Here's the thing, though. Just has grit. We know this from previous matches. Hopefully, Just can hold on. And uh, we'll see if uh, Just can turn around and make it two wins to get to the round of eight. Thanks for listening.